everybody, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today we are going to talk about bullying, we're going to be talking about cancel culture, and we're going to be talking about victims. (laughs) Oh my fucking god, dude. I can't. I can't today. I just, I fucking can't. Um, I just got off of um, a marathon call with Andrew from Heavy Board that I did for his show. And it's going to be, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. He got me going on some topics that I wasn't expecting that we were going to actually talk about. Talk about fucking rant bill i fucking went off so when those episodes finally air i will let you guys know because it will be if you guys like it when i'm yelling and screaming about shit you're gonna like this so last night i was super fucking depressed i was uh, a bottle of red in i'd written some poems to try to get the feelings off my chest and it somehow just made me feel worse And I was really low. And then I got a special gift from Becky over at Lit Mag News. (laughs) Because Becky at Lit Mag News does this thing where she seems to let anyone with some crazy stupid fucking idea write a fucking post on her fucking thing. And sell it like it's not stinking as shit. We're We're gonna go over something i got last night really late and um i held back i was gonna start leaving horrible fucking comments on it and i'm like you know what look this is what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna do a podcast about it and get it all out there like i really want becky to come on this show so i'm gonna try to reach out to becky in the next couple weeks here and see if i could get her on and um james i think is who wrote this article yes james James, if you're listening to this or watching this, please hit me up because I would love to get to the bottom of these questions that I have that um, for some reason or another you skirted around. Okay, so so please hit me up. I would love to talk to you about this. And I'm not saying this in a shitty way. Prove me wrong. Like if I'm wrong with the takes I'm about to have here, I welcome being wrong about this and having like an open discussion. But right now, this is my show, and I'm the hero of my show, so I'm going to fucking talk about this however the fuck I want, okay? But, again, if I'm wrong, come let me know that I'm wrong, come on the show, we'll have a good talk, we'll have a drink, it'll be great, okay? So let's get to it. So here we are. This is under the humor and opinion section. Um, No shit. So this article is called, It's Time to Confront Conflict in the poetry community. Poet addresses online bullying within the poetry community. Okay, let's see how Poet addresses this. This is written by James Diaz. Okay, now here is the deal. This is one of the longest articles or essays or whatever the fuck you want to call it I've ever fucking read. When I looked at the Substack thing, it said um, a 16-minute read. No, thank you. Here's the other thing. Remember when I said a while back that whenever one of these things are written, it's kind of like going around your asshole to get to your elbow. Like you go all over the place except for the place you're actually trying to get to. And then by the time you get there, you've seen so much stuff that you're, you're not even asking questions anymore. I don't give that much credence to the things that I'm reading, so I never forget my questions. So, what I will say is this. James seems like he's been through a lot, okay? And I'm not going to take that away from James. I will not do that. I believe that the pain and the torment and the torture that James went through, I believe it really happened, and I believe it took its toll on him. But there's some other things that I also believe about this, which we will get to. Now, because this thing is the Great Wall of China of Substack articles, I am not going to read this whole thing. I'm just going to point some things out. 
So here we gazo. My sincere intention behind this article is to ask how might non-traditional communities, communities that do not have the normal mechanisms of conflict de-escalation and intervention at their disposal, disposal, find healthy ways to create such mechanisms for the people they find themselves in community with. As artists, creating with our own internal conflicts is the very lifeblood of what we do in our work if it is not to be superficial. How then might we create deep, deep, deep forms of intervention and de-escalation that do the same on a wider community scale? Okay, James, let me ask you a question. How many words does it take you to ask how to stop online bullying? I'll give you five minutes. Figure out how many words it takes you to fucking say that and get back to me. Okay? I would wait for you, but I have 16 minutes more worth of stuff to read here. So this goes on and on and on. Long fucking winded shit. The motherfucker knows more than five words. Congratulations. I'm very fucking proud of you. You deserve to write an article. This is almost horrendous, having to fucking go through all this. The diverse communities of activism offer us... <laughs> but what binds a literary slash art community together? Is it the work we do? Is it the publishing and the networking opportunities alone? Or is it the deep friendships we form? <laughs> When there are no roads to resolution, people are left to wander like exiles in the fields outside the great cities of belonging. Dude, when I read that sentence, I died fucking laughing. And I'm like, I'm not taking this fucking seriously because James is obviously not taking this seriously. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Drama much. Um, Yes, that is a beautiful metaphor i guess if you are in ancient egypt okay um but we are not there here we have we have a big word here that uh, is good nonetheless if most of the opportunities for our work to be read exists online the cost of not confronting what happens to artists who are scapegoated bullied and dogpiled online are too great to ignore, said Emperor Palpatine one time. This, when I saw this, the scapegoated bit, I was like, uh-oh, this guy might be writing something because he was on the wrong side of something. So let's let's see what happens here. This is the best thing about a good essay or a good article. Uh, and I'm being fucking totally facetious here. It's when you take a, a quote from someone and throw it in there to, to show your readers that you know what you're talking about because you've heard someone else talk about it. So let's see. Emmanuel Levinus calls the face the place of ethical injunction. Thou shall not kill... No face, no injunction. Great. Great. So let's go on and on. So we couldn't create. Okay, we need to talk about it. Let's talk about it. Fuck. Okay, and now we get to the meat, like 17 paragraphs in. Well, let's figure this out. A few years ago, I found myself at the center of a Twitter storm that would wind up taking a great toll on my mental health. It began with my co-editor and my literary magazine tweeting something in regards to a person in the community who had been deemed problematic. <sighs> my co-editor spoke up in defense of this person. Another lit mag editor objected to my co-editor's statement. What could have been an honest, good-faith discussion among adults with differing viewpoints quickly turned into heated arguments, insults, and what amounted to a Twitter dogpile upon myself and my co-editor that lasted weeks. Many poets, writers, and journal editors joined in with comments 
that in some instances felt so personal and abusive that I felt compelled to report their tweets. Oh, shit. Motherfucker just escalated this shit. So then what happened? What happened next? For someone outside of this sort of situation, it might be easy to say, ignore them or just block them. But anyone who's experienced this knows these dog piles are very difficult to ignore. Those hurling insults often demand a response, which I don't know if they do. Weaponizing your own boundary setting, your silence against you. When I did eventually block one of these editors, that actually made things worse. I was singled out and insulted even further, both on Twitter and then on Facebook, where the mob continued its campaign on my personal page. My emotional world spun into turmoil. It felt like I was watching events from outside my body. What was happening? It was all so disproportionate to anything tangible that I could only assume the malice was deeply personal and not about me at all. Of course not. Why would it fucking be about you? Why? Okay? I didn't think that right at that moment. At that moment, I wanted to die. And this is serious and I feel bad for the motherfucker here. In fact, one person, a poet who my magazine had actually published in the past, messaged me on Instagram to suggest I should maybe do as much. I had thoughts of relapsing. My whole life felt like it was ending. Okay, I think he has a magazine called Anti-Heroin Chic or something like that. So I think the relapsing has to do with drug use as opposed to like relapsing into suicidal thoughts or anything like that. Soon my career was also hit by the storm. Two editors removed my poems from their journals. They did not notify me. Uh, Another editor took down an interview I was the subject of the very day it was published. I was not conferred with. No one asked for my side of the story. These editors' actions made clear what they thought. While they had once found my writing worthy of publication, they no longer considered me worthy enough as a human being to appear in their magazines. Two writers withdrew their books from our press. One of those authors, who I was very close with, ended our friendship abruptly. And though we did eventually converse privately and found some closure, that friendship's ending was especially painful. A friend of mine was threatened that their book would be pulled by a publisher if they continued to be friends with me. Not if they continued to associate with me, but if they continued to be friends with me. How did we get here as a community? This is the most telling part of this whole fucking thing. I present all this here, not in order to relitigate the specific details of what happened. No shit. All of this transpired over five years ago, so why bring it up, right? Rather, to show an example of the type of Twitter dogpile that can take place and the psychological and material consequences such dogpiles can have. So this is where this podcast is going to take a tragic turn, all right? Because we have heard now what happened to James. We have heard now what the effect was for James. But what he has not mentioned was the cause. Because everything in life is cause and effect. We did not hear any cause. All we heard was effect. The other thing that is not in this retelling of events You want to know what that is? Remorse, regret, apologies, anything. So whatever the fuck it was that got everyone mad at this fucking dude in the first place, he has never, like, changed his tune on it. No apology in there, okay? He's asking for people to, like, be fucking human and not be fucking assholes. And I agree. People need to not be fucking assholes. But if we look at the elephant in the room here, there was a cause 
to make people do this. If a good friend of yours doesn't want to fucking be your friend anymore, publishers are fucking throwing your shit out. Motherfuckers are writing you that you've published saying that you should die. This tells me that you might have fucking said something really fucked up. You might have taken the side of someone who really fucked up and then said some stuff that really fucked up. Okay. Now, you also said that no one wanted your side of the story. Well, the only reason why no one would want your side of the story is if you plastered it on Twitter with all your horrible, stupid fucking ideas. No one needs your side of the story when they see exactly what the fuck you said. Now, when I do these things, I don't like to read up on anybody. I like to take the article for what the article is. So any information I have is in this thing. This dude, James, might be the nicest fucking dude on the planet, coolest fucking guy in the world. But I'm just going off of what I'm reading here as someone who just got sent an email telling me to read this fucking article that lasts 17 fucking hours. Okay? And all I've seen in here is fucking crying victimhood with taking no responsibility for your actions and being upset of being in a really shitty fucking place, i.e. Twitter, and being surprised at the kind of fucking vitriol you got for what I'm assuming is having a really bad take. Now, whatever your take was, you're expecting people to just like be like loving towards you like you did nothing wrong, okay? But me reading this, I don't know what the fuck it was you did, so I don't know if you actually, or the person you were defending, actually hurt anybody. And then if they did, why the fuck are you defending them? This has nothing to do with the internet not being a place for dogpiling. It has everything to do with if you are a shitty fucking person that does shitty things and says shitty things, don't be fucking shocked when everyone fucking turns on you. I don't understand this fucking mentality. It was the same shit with fucking um, Magenta. Like, I just don't understand. I don't get it. I don't understand any of this. It's really fucking obvious. If you roll around in the dirt, you're going to get fucking dirty. Period. But this sounds like you actually fucking took a stance on something and said some shit. But you're not telling us what the fuck it was that you said. You're just saying that what happened to you was very hurtful, and I agree that it was probably very hurtful. But at the same time, scapegoating, dogpiling, bullying, this stuff usually doesn't happen unless something happened first. And some of you might be going, oh, that's just like the same like she was asking for it line. No, it's not. Because if someone is being a shitty fucking person and says something shitty that hurts other people and then is shocked that people fucking don't like that. What the fuck is that? Why could one person say and hurt and do whatever the fuck they want, but then when it comes back at them, they're like suddenly the fucking victim. All right, so there's more of this fucking hot mess, okay? Where did we get here as a community? Good Lord, good Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I would like to make people aware that this takes place in case you've been living under a rock for the last fucking decade. Also, so that we as a community can do a better job of seeing it, recognizing it, and addressing it. Okay, I'm gonna fix it all for you. Don't be a fucking dick. If you're not a fucking dick online, and you don't back people who were fucking horrible dick fucking people, at least right away, give it some chance to fucking breathe. You can probably do whatever the fuck you want. But all of this here, it implies that you made some tweets and then were shocked when people clapped back at you. I was managing issues in my personal life. Okay, blah, blah, blah. A large part of my pain um, in these situations is community silence. 
Yeah, when you think you have a community and then you don't anymore, that sucks. When you spend the majority of your life on Twitter instead of writing fucking poems, and then Twitter fucking turns its fucking back on you, it's probably pretty fucking lonely. A few years ago, a young poet was caught plagiarizing another poet's work, and they were not ca just called out to ask to be accountable, they were brutally made fun of it. No shit if they were actually plagiarizing somebody's work. Why would anyone trust anything that person ever writes again if they were blatantly plagiarizing someone's work? When this person accepted full responsibility for their transgression, which means they actually did it, and apologized personally to the poet whose work they had plagiarized from, no one cared. Oh, he said sorry. Cool. No one's going to put his stuff out anymore. Because he can't be trusted. This is common sense. And this was how it was before the internet. This is not a new fucking thing. I reached out to this person, as had been done to me, and found that they were actually handling it much better than I had. Oh, shocking. Probably because they knew they had done something wrong, and then apologized for it. And he said, I will always keep writing, but just for me. I will probably never publish again. I don't know if that has anything to do with his choice. He will probably never publish again, because he was caught for plagiarism. That's why. <sighs> I hope this person does one day publish again. But oh, the hard, difficult work we've had. Okay, blah, 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 blah. And then his grandma, he was caring for his grandma during his cancellation, in quotes. Um, and I don't know why he keeps putting canceled in quotes. It actually fucking happened, apparently, because you were off the internet for a bit. Because all it is is social media stuff. Like, it's not like you couldn't get work anywhere. I know, like, right around the time it happened, you got shit pulled from things. But you got shit pulled from things from things that were on Twitter because of the Twitter mindset. You don't have to be on Twitter. Okay. Two other poets I know were canceled for personal conflicts with their ex-partners. Okay. Nah. Okay, 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 okay. Two other poets I know were canceled for personal conflicts with their ex-partners. They both permanently deleted their social media and quit publishing in addition to having much of their work removed from magazines. Okay, I'm going to say this. This is an age-old story. How many poets, or just how many people do you know, that if personal conflicts became public with ex-partners, how does that f feel in any realm of anything? It doesn't have to be poetry. Just in the world. It does not play well. If the dude was right, there's usually some kind of fix. There's some kind of vindication for that. There's been a couple instances where that's happened. In every other instance, it's usually not the case because the person with the personal conflict was kind of a piece of shit. Okay, if you want to hitch your wagon to a plagiarist and two wife beaters, I, I don't know what else it could be because you don't go into fucking detail on it. Okay, so that's fine. Um, many of the same people were involved in their cancellation. If it isn't obvious by now, when I use the term cancellation, it's used as a placeholder for what is more accurately bullying, scapegoating, dogpiling group behavior which often leads to removal of writers published work and or a writer's own decision to quit or just put your own shit out and you don't have to worry about any of this fucking crap shocker look at that there are many many more stories like these that i could tell but i would like to end with one other because it touches on on the emotional tone i hope is coming through in this piece the emotional toll such events take on us when you don't accept responsibility for being a piece of shit. What it feels like to feel so alone and abandoned. An editor I ended up befriending was bullied online for their religious beliefs. <sighs> God damn it. God damn it. We're, we're going to truth bomb this shit. Okay? Um, you didn't say what kind of religion this was okay but i'm gonna make some assumptions here okay and if i'm wrong correct me i'm 
totally down with being corrected. Okay. Here's the deal within the last five years, but this was probably much more recent than this because you only started befriending people who've been canceled after you yourself were canceled and you figured that that was your friend group. So um, it, it was probably much more recent than five years ago. Well, we know how the Christian church is, and this person might not be Christian. This could be like Muslim, this could be fucking some other fucking thing. I have no idea. But I'm just going to assume, based on the information that I have here, that this is some sort of fundamentalist, Christian, conservative person. Okay? And again, I shouldn't assume, but I just fucking did it, so deal. Okay? Now, why would a religious person who is also the editor of an arts mag be in a situation where somebody could cancel them for their religious beliefs. Okay, let's think about what these beliefs could be. <sighs> could the beliefs be racism, homophobia, transphobia, Every other horrible fucking thing um, that the religious community is trying to perpetrate on the whole fucking world. Um, women's bodily autonomy. That could be a fucking thing, too. And this fucking Yahoo is sugarcoating this into saying he was bullied online for their religious beliefs. Well, guess what? If your religious beliefs make you a fucking asshole and you like, here's the thing. Like, I don't know what the fuck this person even said, but let's assume that this person said any of the things that I just brought up. But because it's a religious belief, they're allowed to say that with impunity. Fuck you. This article is such bullshit fucking victimhood. This is driving me fucking crazy when you do not give any fucking details to the things in which you are talking about. The only detail you gave was the dude who fucking did the plagiarism. And I feel like the reason why you gave that detail is because that dude came clean and apologized for it and still was shunned. Whereas all these other people haven't fucking, including you, haven't fucking apologized for anything, haven't fucking taken any responsibility for your fucking actions, and now you're crying because people don't like you. People aren't your friend on the widow Twitter. Who fucking cares? And you're blaming it on the community that you had a bad take that pissed even your best friends off? Unfucking believable. And it just goes on and on and fucking on. And then at the end, it's like, hey, create, love, grow. Create, love, and grow. Who doesn't want? Who doesn't need these things? Yeah, create whatever you want. But don't treat everyone like shit. Fucking idiot. Okay, let me see. Okay, I need to calm down because I'm jumping on stuff here. Let me see. And then all these people are like, yeah, I totally understand, man. It's hard. Uh, oh, this author is very brave to write it. Oh, shit. Yeah, I bet, dude. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, and James is like in the comments, like responding to people. That's interesting. I could relate so much to this. I just started therapy for it. And guess what? There is a lot of bullying that's fucked up. I just think that the examples that James gave were examples that were very much things that could have been prevented. Um, let's see. Very sad tale hiding behind social media screen. Okay, whatever. Thanks for sharing your story. Bullying. Oh, my God. Something like 15 years ago, I posted on Facebook. I could have been the author of this piece. Thank you so much. Well said. I am blessed. I wish I had some notion about how... To try to help to deal with this stuff. I sympathize. Thank you, James. Thank you so much. I am so sorry this happened to you. Oh my gosh, it just keeps going. Um, we're a social species, so communities are okay. Um, more than a few talented individuals were fairly chased out of the business by lynch mobs. Tiana Hansen, to name one, from 2018 to 2020. Yes, I think of Tiana often. She's such a kind person, didn't deserve what happened to her. I hope one day she returns. I don't know who that is. Maybe I should look it up. I'm so sorry this happened, James. I find myself looking. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God. This is so. Okay. 
Sorry you had to go through all that persecution, but it does seem that hard times can either make us or break us. Oh, my God. This has been the case in the literary world. Oh, until people are willing to name names of those who have a history of instigating pylons and to proactively push back on such behavior, these issues will not be resolved. Oh, I have a testimonial here. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. Thank you for this essay. Whenever. Oh, Jesus Christ. Humor and opinion. The subtitle made me be suspicious. <laughs> but if this wasn't a parody, oh my god, I can't possibly be the only person who sees a disconnect between real life and life portrayed on social media. Um, if you stayed online all day and watched news channels, okay, what are you? Not everybody is triggered by the littlest thing. Okay, like he had the best take I read so far on this, but whatever. So everyone is just sucking the dick of this thing. I wonder if I should fucking say something. Should I fucking say something here? Should I fucking say I don't buy any of this shit? We'll let the podcast speak for itself. I just, I just don't know what to say without getting fucking deep in it. And I just fucking gave all my fucking takes here. Maybe I will say something on it. I don't know. Go back and look at this um, lit mag bullshit if you want to see if I left a comment on it. I haven't decided yet. Dude, I swear to God, this Becky chick, Becky bad take, Becky tush, touch, touch, touch. I didn't mean to say tush if that's not your last name, Becky. I'm just reading it like I see it. You, Becky, you have been putting up article after article of absolute fucking garbage bullshit. Like, I don't know. I just, I, just, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. So anyway, um, that was that. Here's the fucking deal. If you say stupid shit online, people are going to get mad. If you can't back the things you're saying, people are going to get mad. And check this out. If you act like you give a fuck... When people talk shit, they're going to keep talking shit. If you act like you don't give a shit, they're going to get bored. And I guarantee you, someone else will fuck up in the next five minutes and take their ire. Unless you kept talking and saying stupid, horrible, shitty fucking things. Cause and effect. I don't know who Tanya Lilyhammer was or whatever her name was. Um, maybe I'll look that up and, um, have something to say about it. I I don't fucking know. Maybe I should look you up and see now that I've done the, done the heavy lifting here. Well, fuck it. Let's just do it real quick. Ken Russell's the who's okay. Ken Russell and Frank something had a baby and the baby grew up to be a hot bi slut. What? Okay. Oh, fun. James Diaz is back harassing me for no reason. Must be Monday. Okay, so this is from a few years ago. Let's see. Note from the editor. As some may or may not know, for almost a year now, I have been the target of harassment, slander, and bullying by Colleen Carney of Drunk Monkeys. I had opted to be silent about the situation publicly as I thought best at the time. However, the attacks have not abated. Colleen has mocked the death of my grandmother the grief and loss of my contributors and use sexually aggressive and traumatizing language towards me. I am a rape and incest survivor. And her language did bring up the horrid memory of those violations. A brief breakdown around the beginning of the year, one of my co-editors wrote the on Twitter that they didn't think a certain problematic writer was an unredeemable as people thought. At the time, I was in Florida caring for my best friend who had COPD, cancer, and 30% lung capacity. Tweets were showing up from Colleen and theirs about this, and I could not handle the stress at the time. As you can imagine, caring for terminally sick drains our reservoirs. I blocked Colleen from the anti-heroin chic account because it's main account I use and didn't need to see her stressful mocking tweets. My co-editor resigned from it within weeks. Or within weeks, Colleen became began tweeting insults and name calling, not just of me, but of my remaining two co-editors. I began seeing my name pop up from people I followed in response to a blocked account, Colleen's. It was getting ugly fast, and I decided the best way to protect my co-editors and myself was to file a report with Twitter about targeted harassment. I made a private post on Facebook about the incident, and in my report, 
and someone else sent a screenshot to Colleen, which instigated about a year of vicious online attacks towards me. Of course, Twitter did nothing. I gotta find out. Oh, of course, Twitter did nothing. In the course of this, I lost two chapbook authors who pulled their books from me out of fear of controversy. Now I have watched as many in our community have actively participated in and condemned this abuse. I would like to think that maybe it's because you don't know the context or have the facts. So I've decided to decided to provide a public statement. Good. Essay and receipts of what happened. Yes. I want to hear what you did first, though, dude. I will not say any more about this. I've been victimized enough in my lifetime as a disabled, mentally ir- ill, queer identifying person of color, survivor of sexual abuse, incest, rape, extreme poverty, police violence institutionalization this community has adopted to support an abuser over her victim this saddens me but it also re-traumatizes me victim blaming is never okay some have asked me privately for the whole story so here it is oh there's a link and i can't click on it i'm gonna have to type it out everything i have to say is on that and receipts of colleen's abusive tweets i am done with this i'm moving forward um blah 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 okay so let me see if i could write this down left out in the cold dot wordpress dot com is no longer available the authors have deleted this site (laughs) fuck me god damn it all right so whatever so i'm i'm looking at these tweets from the person who allegedly harass this person i know i'm sort of talking to myself here but i'm very disturbed by this completely fabricated timeline of events that really never went past your editor defended a racist and i told her not to and then you tried to get me kicked off of twitter this is incredibly disturbing in conclusion If you ever think you're right about something, look at who is agreeing with you. Oh, shit. If it's someone who wrote an entire book of graphic rape poems, you're not right about something. Oh, damn. Gosh, couldn't you have been a little more docile when you defended yourself from this, uh, from his initial onslaught of abuse? Look how upset he is that he got a taste of what he dished out. Men are so fragile. (laughs) How do they even roll over in bed without fracturing? Tis indeed a mystery. He has been attacking me off and on since April. All right, so whatever. Like, this is what it is. Um, My guess was pretty much accurate. They were defending a racist or someone who writes rape poems. Um both are gross um and i still didn't see anything like i'm not taking any fucking sides here but she at least said what the fuck the whole thing was about he still talked about all of the victim shit without saying exactly what happened so whatever and again there were receipts at one point but now there's not so whatever i don't know like this whole thing of Twitter being everyone's life, I think we're kind of past that now, hopefully, but you never know. The next thing, too, would be people being shocked that having bad takes and supporting bad people is like, that's bad? What? Um, if this person is who this person says they are, I'm really curious about this person who got canceled for religious beliefs because I cannot imagine the left wing on Twitter attacking anyone for having religious beliefs unless those religious beliefs were coming down on somebody. If the religious beliefs were being used as a form of abuse to another party. I don't fucking know. Again, I I, I can't. I I can't. Let's get into some butt plugs because I'm fucking done. I'm tired. So butt plugs, go off and get your um, I Hate Matt Wall vinyl sticker for whatever you put stuff on. Bloodshed Review number two is out now. Um, And as of this recording, I still have copies of Bloodshed number one. 
Um, I still also have copies of Let Us Bleed with Bunny Wild, Bunny Wild, Bunny Wild, and I still have copies of Winner of Your Mom's Sodomy Prize for Poetry. Pick it up now. Blood Rag issue 13 is available for download on my website, or you can pick it up on the Etsy shop as well. And by this time, I really think that my new chapbook, Drinking Less, will be out and available. So if it is, go get that too, because there's only 45 copies of it, and only the first 20 are signed. Okay? Okay. So grab that when you can. Um, and then with that, let's get into the shout outs. So I want to give a big thank you to my motherfuckers over on Patreon. I want to give a thank you to Michael, to Cedar, to Harry. And then all you motherfuckers over there in the YouTube thank you crew. I want to give a big thank you to Patrick, to Britt, to Jan, to Deb, to Ethan, to Julia. You guys are fucking awesome. And then over there in the Anarchy crew, the big swinging dongs. I want to give a big thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Minnie, to Thomas, to Tim J, to Shaylin, to Tim G, to Chill Baby, to Tamara, to Adam, to Chase, to JH, and to Jessica. You guys are the shit. Thank you so much. And then finally, the biggest of all the fucking thank yous in the world goes to the number one chappy over there in the chat book of the month club. Caitlin, thank you. And I hope you enjoy your copy of the Bloodshed Review and your copy of Drinking Less and your copy of the Blood Rag. Issue 13. I hope you're enjoying them. Okay. So, with all that said, support Poetic Anarchy Press. Keep buying our books. Type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.